Uh, good afternoon. Apologies for making you wait. That was just being the net. Uh, firstly, Taskin's had uh, an injection about three or four days ago. Um, and he's done a bit of gym yesterday, a little bit of a bowl today, five or six overs. Um, I'm not sure if I want to risk playing him yet. I think there's still a lot of cricket to be played. There's two test matches, um, and it's also a great opportunity to keep developing the other fast bowlers. So I don't think I want to risk playing him yet, but he's on, on his way to recovery. And then the second question regarding the win. Look, the guys were ecstatic, very happy. Um, and rightfully so, because it was a fantastic win for us. Um, but come today, it's done. Uh, we've had a good long chat and we've got to take the positives and the learnings from the last game. And we've got to try and improve in every department going into tomorrow's game, because we know it's going to be another tough one. But everybody very happy, um, ecstatic, proud of the team's performance, but it's now done and we've got to focus on tomorrow's game. Uh, two questions. Firstly, obviously it was such a dramatic game the other night. Yeah, look, I think we've been involved in some amazing games. I mean, as a coach, I've been in some amazing games with Bangladesh. Um, we've had some narrow wins, some narrow losses, but that was as, as, as close as they come, I suppose. And, and you're right, they, uh, it shouldn't have been that tight. Um, when we needed 55, I think, with four wickets down, we're in a pretty good position. Um, so, yep, yeah, by, by far not the perfect performance, and there's a lot of work still to be done. Um, but to be... To be able to win from that situation says a lot about the team's character and we've got to see the positive from it and not dwell too much on the on the things that weren't that good and that's that's the way I, I see it going forward. Uh, yes, sir. Look, I think the, this conference in this format um, we know our record in Bangladesh is very good and there's a, there's a sense of excitement that we're playing against India, we're one of the, the big teams in the world and it's a great opportunity to, to test ourselves against one of the best teams in the world. But there's, there's, there's also a sense of, look, we, we know India going to come back strong. Um, we've got to play better cricket than we played in, in the first game, particularly with the bat, um, because I don't think we can get away with it again. Um, uh, so there's definitely a sense of, of, of determination to make sure we put in a better performance particularly with the bat tomorrow. What are the boundaries that we have to find? What No, not quite his boundary eating, just a little bit of his intensity. I think his intensity maybe dropped a little bit and was looking more to survive than looking to score. Um, and that's why he probably missed that half volley on leg stump. If you're looking to score, he's probably eating that for two or for four. So just making sure that he gets into the, into the routine and the, and the rhythm of being a little bit more positive than looking to survive. Not so much boundary eating, but just hitting the gaps a bit more. Sorry, I know you didn't finish your question there. Sorry. Well, of course, uh, I'm telling you that point you were saying regarding Mahmoud. Like, Mahmoud and Mr. Kuruni, they have already dropped from the T20 side of Bangladesh cricket team. And they're taking Mahmoud with the ODI performance is also not up to the mark for the last two matches. Uh, do you think that they are on the declining curve of their career? Uh, so firstly, I'm going to defend my players. Uh, uh, Mushfiq wasn't dropped, he retired from T20 cricket. That's the first point. And then the second point is, I think the last two games in Zimbabwe, of, which was a game before these last two, I think Mamadullah got 80, 89 and, and 40. 80 and 40 or 39 or something like that. So I'm very reluctant to say that. Um, all players have times in their careers where they're searching for runs, but it was one one day international ago that he got 89. So I've got no concerns with him at the moment. Um, we know that all players, when they get to the end, older parts of their careers, they're going to go through those phases. Um, but I still have a lot of faith in his ability and a lot of faith in his batting. Uh, I know it's in game and you don't want to be Why, uh, of course, it's why it's not, nothing else is not worth taking. We have to 
Yeah, look, for me, I, I like a left hand, right hand uh, opening combination. Um, second point is he seems to be finding his way in white ball cricket. He got two 50s in the T20 World Cup. And look, I can tell you a lot of great players, the first 20, 25, one day internationals or 20 test matches. I think of Jacques Callis, his first 12 test matches. I think he averaged 12 in test match cricket, became one of the best players of all time. So, um, look, Chanto needs to perform more consistently. We know that. Uh, He's also been on some tricky surfaces. The West Indies was really tough to bear, and he played some good innings there. Um, so, look, you've got to be patient with some players. 12 one internationals is, is not that many games. He's playing against high-quality teams on tough conditions. So you've got to be patient um, and, and allow those players to find their form at some stage. Yeah, look, um, Rabs hasn't played a one-day international now since South Africa um, because he got injured. Um, and I think that the new ball is so important in Melbourne, being able to, to negotiate the new ball. I, I sort of like keeping Sakib away from the first three or four overs against the new ball. So once a new ball, is a, once a ball gets a little bit older, I find Sakib to be uh, an unbelievable player. So I want to try and keep him a little bit away from the new ball. Absolutely. Like I said, we've got, I think, maybe 12 one-day internationals before the World Cup. And it's, it's a great opportunity to look at different combinations and give guys an opportunity to play because when we get to the World Cup, we want to see who can do those particular roles. Rabi did it in South Africa. He got one good score. He got 50 and played, played fantastically well. Um, and then came in in some difficult situations, the T20, with only a couple of overs left. So that's a very difficult situation. A fifth for me is our guy at the, at the back at the back in there, and I'm still backing Mamadula's um, ability and his experience to to get us out of tricky situations. So, a lot of players got to be patient for their opportunities, and when opportunities come, they got to make sure they take them. Yeah, last few Mm. I hope we lose a toss because you're never quite sure what to do here, to be honest. Um, there's, there's, there's value in batting first. You can see the ball nipped around at night. I think the last 70 or the last 20 games here, if a team gets 200, I think they've won 17 of the last 20 games. So you're never quite sure what, how much is enough. So sometimes you try and score too many and you get bowled out early. So I, d I don't know if the toss is that important. Um, and then regarding the middle order, Look, I think we've got really good experience there with Sakib, Mushfik, Riyad, and a dynamic player in our fifth. So I've got no concerns with our, our middle order um, at this particular stage. There's still games to go before the World Cup, um, and I'd rather be having problems with it now than when we get to the World Cup in a few months' time. I think he did a fantastic job in the first game. Um, look, I thought his tactical changes were good. He bounced ideas off some of the players around the team that he that he values of their opinions of. And I thought he did a really good job. Look, every captain's got different styles. Lytton's a quiet guy. Um, Lee doesn't say much. Leads through performance and very good thinker on the game. So it's good to spread the leadership and have different sorts of opinions and different styles of leadership. I think that'll only serve Bangladesh cricket well. No, he's, a, he's, I mean, he's like a, um, a quiet hero in this team type of thing. He's, he's, he's so consistent in all formats, got a hundred in test matches, he's willing to bat anywhere, deals with pressure really well. Um, I, I know at one stage he was number two or number three in 50 over cricket with the ball, I'm not sure where he is now, but you can always rely on him. If he goes for a few runs, you know you can bring him back in test situations because he really thrives in those situations. And I mean, it was a, was a special innings the other day, the way he held the, the game together, and he was clear and calm in his thinking at the back end, and 
Um, look, it's not the first time he's done it. We were 40 for six against Afghanistan and he played superbly and um, just really pleased with him because he's a fantastic character in the team and a really, a really good bloke to work with. Is he valued enough? I value him massively. Um, how the public see him and the media see him, I don't know, but as the coach, he's one of the first names on my sheet. Yeah, look, I, I know he's been struggling a little bit with his shoulder and maybe not trying to spin the ball as much as he has in the past because he's playing so many T20s where he's just trying to bowl straight at the stumps. And I thought um, his, his change of pace and his angles and his shape in the ball was fantastic in the last game. And, I mean, behind Tendulkar, he's got the second most man of the matches, so you always know he's going to put in a performance at some stage. That's a given, whether it's with a bat or with the ball. Um, so really pleased, and he'll take a lot of confidence from that last particular bowling effort. Uh, just going back to Miraj and his performance, which was obviously fantastic the other day. Um, Shakib is obviously you know, the, the superstar of the team, and you know, whenever he does choose to kind of hang up his boots, it's going to be a huge boost to Phil. But is there a sense that perhaps Miraj could be groomed into that sort of role? If he bowls left arm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look, end of the day, um, I mean, Sakib has been unbelievable. And, um, I coached South Africa for a long time when Jacques Callis retired. I think it's now eight years ago and they're still trying to find that sort of replacement. You're not sure, do you play seven batsmen or six batsmen? Do you play an extra bowler? Do you play an extra batter? So those sorts of cricketers are very hard to replace because whether Sakib is bowling badly, he'll get runs. If he's batting badly, he'll perform with the ball. So. They're very difficult to replace and, and they're very few and far in between and that's why they're special cricketers. Um, we've got to keep him for as long as we can and make sure he's fresh and make sure he's uh, driven enough to play for Bangladesh for as long as we possibly can until we find somebody that could possibly do that. Is Miraj the guy? Um, possibly. He, he's definitely got the game to bat in the top five, top six um, and be a really consistent performer of the ball. So by all means, he's a guy that can pick up that mantle if we keep providing opportunities to play all formats. How confident are you to win this match and this series? Look, in this format, I think our team's always confident. Um, we know it's uh, not going to be easy. We know India are quality side and they're going to come back strong. They'd have learned from the last game. Uh, but I'd rather be going into tomorrow's game 1-0 up than 1-0 down. So we know it's going to be hard fought um, and we're going to have to play a lot better than we did in the first game. Um, but pretty confident that we can, we can compete once again and if we hold our nerve at crucial stages, we can cross the line definitely. Thank you. Thank you.